One of the cooler new features that I want to show is a suites only feature which basically allows you to create a live connection between Maya and Motion Builder so that we can basically create animation in Motion Builder and stream that directly to Maya. So what I have here of course is just this this standard HIK rig on my Sven character. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually just going to pull Maya kind of off to the side and I'll just show the live connection process. In order to send this character over to Motion Builder I just have to select a, just any effector or, or control object on the character and I'll just say send to Motion Builder as live connection. This will basically give me the option of uh, connecting remotely or um, locally. So that if I'm connecting remotely, I can actually just enter in the remote IP address. If I'm connecting locally, I'll just use the default. So we'll send that to Motion Builder, and within a few seconds, you'll see my character open up on the Motion Builder side. There it is. And I get a visual bar indicating that I have a live connection between the two. So you'll see here now that if I pull in, I have the exact same character with the exact same rig. And now if I were to go in and begin to edit that rig, whether it be with IK, and or FK, you'll see that as I edit it on the Motion Builder side, I have a live dynamic connection to Maya. So this would allow me to basically go in and apply animation using various Motion Builder tools. So for instance, the Story tool in Motion Builder is a very powerful tool for creating kind of non-linear animation. So what I'm going to do here is I'm actually going to just insert a character animation track and put my character into that track. Now I want to apply a clip to this track. So let me just uh, rewind to frame zero here. And I'll actually just pull back and I'm going to drag in my simple run clip. Now you'll see if I basically come in and scrub the timeline is that I've got a run animation applied to my character on the motion builder side. And as I scrub the timeline, you'll see that run animation will sim simultaneously update in Maya. So again, if I go in and scrub the timeline, there you can see the exact same animation in both viewports. Another thing I can do on the story side would be to layer a subtrack onto this. So I'll create a character override subtrack, and then I'll go in here and I'll create a bone mask for this particular character. So if I just expose down here under my character list, I can either do the full body composite or I can just use the upper body and actually turn off the lower body. So now I'm basically going to be overriding the upper body with a new animation. So let's pick uh, something like my jump clip and I'll just grab my jump clip and I'll paste that on top of my run clip and now you can see that it's overriding the upper body animation. So now again when I scrub through my timeline I have my character running and then spreading his arms and I've essentially combined two unique animations. So this is just one example of the kinds of things that you can do on the Motion Builder side that weren't possible directly in the Maya side. This allows you to actually work with Motion Builder and Maya simultaneously. Another thing is that you'll notice is that the environment has not been sent over to Motion Builder. So this allows me to simply send what I need, just the character itself and the animation, to Motion Builder, deal with the animation on the Motion Builder side without having to send the entire level as a reference on the Maya side. This also allows me to take advantage of Maya's referencing so that I can actually, for instance, reference in a level or other characters into my Maya scene see those in conjunction with the animation I'm working with in Motion Builder without having to send all of the data back and forth, simply sending the bits and pieces that I need. With the introduction of the Ultimate Entertainment Creation Suite, uh, it's the first time we've actually bundled 3ds Max and Maya in the same suite. So now, uh, as part of that, we've integrated the one-click functionality between Max and Maya, so that with a single click we can send objects uh, back and forth between the two packages. But in addition to that, we've also added functionality that allows us to essentially share animation data between cat rigs in Max and HIK rigs in Maya. So what you'll see here is I have my Sven character all rigged up with a cat rig. You can see here I've got controllers similar to what I have with HIK. So I've got controllers for the arms and the, the body part, various body parts and so on. So if I undo that, let me go back. Rather than creating animation from scratch, we'll actually use one of the strengths of cat, and that is the ability to apply procedural animation. So I'm going to go over here to my cat controls. And first of all, I'm going to create an animation layer that I can put some new animation on. And then I'm going to load a procedural animation in, into this. So you can see here, I've got a variety of built-in presets. For instance, I've got a game character creep, run, and walk. 
Now these are all presets that are based on various parameters. So I've got controls, for instance, for my pelvis where I have a roll, twist, uh, weight, and so on. I've got leg controls for things like knee angle, twist, swing, and so on, as well as arms and other body parts. So I could go in and I could configure all these body parts um, and procedural values. Or if I've already got something that I like, I can actually import that from a, an external file. So I've got a file called svenrun.cmp. I'll open that up and I'll apply that to the existing layer. Now what that's going to do is it's going to load all the various parameters that are in that template file onto the cat rig. And now when I go in and I just simply push play to make that active, you can see here that now I've got an animation of a run cycle that was created procedurally. So this could be modified and tweaked to look a little bit different if I wanted to raise his arms or uh, make his legs a little wider. I could do that using procedural values, but as soon as I get it to a point that I'm happy with, I can send this to Maya for further use. So if we pull this off to the side and we take a look over here on the, the Maya side, what you'll see here is I've got just a simple environment on the Maya side. Now this could obviously be a lot more complex than it is, but for now we're just going to work with this environment that we have. So what I want to do is basically go in and I want to take everything in my cat rig and I want to export that. So I'm actually going to pull back here a little bit just so I can get to my, uh, my layer window here. I'm going to take the cat rig and I'm going to select everything in the cat rig. That's all the controllers associated with this. And I'm going to send that cat rig with all the associated, an associated animation over to Maya. So I'll go to send to. I've got Maya Satamaj Motion Builder mud box here. I'll choose Maya. And what I want to do is just simply update the current scene. Now that will export the animation as well as all of the various uh, uh, joints and the mesh as well. Anything associated with this character, it'll send that to Maya and then Maya will begin to import that. So now you'll see that I have the same character on the Maya side and if I scrub through my Maya timeline you'll see that I have the exact same animation. You also notice the skeleton that uh, was brought across in the mesh and so on. Now the interesting thing about this is that this character now has been pre-characterized for use with HIK. So if I go into my character controls and I go into the definition tab, you'll see that it has already been defined as a character. It's already been named based on the character name on the Mac side. So I don't really need to define it. I, all I need to do is actually bring up my control rig. So you can see here I have my control rig already accessible and enabled. I can now actually begin to use my standard character controls to go in here and drive my character. But what I want to do is actually take the animation that's currently on the skeleton and put that onto the character. So I'll go back to the animation again. You can see if I scrub the timeline, it's all there. And what I want to do now is simply plot this animation. Now I'm actually going to just maximize my view here so we can see what's going on. I'm actually going to go in here under bake and I'm going to bake to the control rig. That's going to transfer the cat animation that was created on that original skeleton and it's going to put it onto the control rig. So now you can see I still have the exact same animation, but now it's on the control rig itself. So if I wanted to make modifications, I have the power of the control rig to basically apply layers of animation on top of the existing animation. So let's say that, for instance, I wanted to change the placement of his hands. I can go into the animation layers here. And actually, first of all, I want to go to the character controls. I want to go under edit controls and I want to create a new animation layer for the entire control rig. So it's going to create an animation layer that I can now use to modify the existing animation. So now I can say for instance I wanted to raise the hand controls. Again let's just go back and make sure I have the appropriate controls selected here. And we'll go in and we'll just add a simple offset to this. So let's just say right here I wanted to raise these up so his hands are much higher. I'm going to create a simple animation offset so now you can see he's running with his hands much higher up towards his upper body. So now if I wanted to send this back to Max, I have a live connection between the two. So if I pull my interface up here a little bit, you can see it says connect to the 3DS Max. Let's actually pull this off to the side once again so we can see both of these simultaneously. I'll say connect it to Max, update. That will send the changes back over to Max and I can view them on the same exact cat rig. So now when I take a look on the Mac side, we'll pull into this, and as you can see, I have the same character, but now with two tracks. So I have the original cat motion layer. If I solo that, you can see the original animation intact. And then I have my new layer, which is the HIK layer. If I solo that, you can see the difference there with the arms raised. 
So now I can send uh, modifications back to Maya or I can work with this as I need to on the Mac side.